Hello everyone. Today we are going to step through the three parts of the web or internet. Most people think that internet is what they experience through their email client or web browser every day. But many expensive services work in the background and the web is just one part of it. Behind that web browser there are multiple layers that an average person might face. Three layers commonly used to divide the web. Surface web, deep web and dark web. It's best to imagine the web as an iceberg. Surface web is the top of iceberg and is the easiest part to see or access. Deep web is the deeper part of the iceberg beneath the surface web. Dark web is the bottom of the iceberg which is a place accessible only by using special technologies. All right, let's begin with the first layer, surface web. This is the internet we all know and love. It's always available to the general public and accessible via search engines like Google and Yahoo. Some people call the surface web we use for everyday activities like social networking and reading news a common web. Everything you see on the surface of the internet when going online, for example using Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, etc. makes part of the surface web which comprises just 4% of the entire internet. Remaining 96% belongs to the deep web and dark web. Data available on the surface web is intentionally indexed by search engines, which means it is registered or listed on search engines. This is the reason you can access it easily as compared to data on the deep web or dark web. Anything that can be found through a web browser using any of the search engines comes under the surface web. This is what when you read books, buy things on Amazon or visit any of your regular websites. This is also the area of web that is under constant surveillance by governments across the world. Here is an example for better understanding. Let's imagine the internet as one big city. Like any city, it contains public places open to everyone, such as streets, avenues and parks. Anyone can go there and look around, and you can easily find them on Google Maps. On the internet, these public places are known as the surface web. Let's talk about the second layer, deep web. This is the secret web. It's not visible to a normal user. You just need special authorization or login details to access the information on deep web. This is because some private data needs to be protected. It is misleading belief that accessing the deep web requires a special skill. No, it's not a rocket science. In fact, it's legal to use the deep web. Deep web comprises 90% of the internet and includes data which is not indexed by search engines. This means that you will not access this data with a simple search. You would need search engines like WorldCat, Not Evil, My Life, etc. Deep web includes everything that search engines cannot identify because it is protected. This is why web spiders are invisible. Surface web and deep web both are accessible by general public, but they require different methods to access them, usually a specific password, encrypted browser, login details, or direct URL. For example, cities have private places that require a pass or ticket to get access, such as cinemas or clubs. Similarly, on the internet, these places are known as deep webs. They require a password or authorization to get access. For instance, you generate a PIN or OPT on your mobile to access your online bank account. Once you enter the PIN or OPT, you can log into your account. You cannot get into your account by typing John's bank account on a search engine. This information is stored on the deep web. You have to use your detail to get access. As you can see, you still have relative access to the deep web and it's not illegal or dangerous. It is often confusing. Actually, you spend a lot of time on deep web pages, but you don't even know it. Here are some examples. Websites that can be accessed with a username and password such as email, cloud services, paid subscription based platforms, video on demand services like Netflix or HBO, military and educational websites, government related legal documents, 
and medical records that's what accessing the deep web is all about let's talk about the third layer dark web the most dangerous part of the internet is called dark web or dark net it's the remaining six percent of the internet dark web is illegal to use all criminal activities are executed on the dark web it's a heaven for killers hackers attackers extortionists and so on in a physical world think of a murky business that takes place in slums tunnels and criminal dens these places are chosen because of limited foot traffic and are not marked on the public maps locations and whereabouts of each hideout are known to limited individuals even though many people know that they exist somewhere similarly on the internet such places are dark webs which are used to carry out evil activities two popular tools used in dark web are tor and i2p these tools are commonly known for providing anonymity to users once you logged into tor browser the most direct way to find pages on the dark web is to receive a link from someone who already knows about the page Dark web is well known because of media reporting on illegal activities. Malicious actors use the dark web to sell or distribute malware programs. Pretty scary, isn't it? Yes, it is. Let's break it down into further details. Dark web includes websites that are designed to be hidden, which mostly have tor URLs, normally end with dot onion, and they are difficult to remember. For example, Facebook. Yes, you heard me right. Dark web also have a Facebook for those who want to keep their identity secret. You must be shocked to know that, right? Anyways, Tor websites are not famous and they are not accessible without using particular software because data is encrypted and hosted anonymously. You can say. Dark web is an underworld or mysterious world for those people who use it or run it. They are very dangerous people who make their own rules and regulations. They create their own network called Tor network that works by encrypting every message and content at every single point. This makes it difficult and almost impossible to track their location. Devices of every single dark net, servers, computers, routers are invisible not only to search engines but also to most browsers because they use non-standard protocols to transfer data hackers not only use the dark web for hacking but also for selling the rewards of hacking such as user credentials financial information corporate data pirated software and much more if your data was leaked in a data breach this is the place where it will be put up for sale. It's the chosen platform for illegal trading of government or scientific databases, exotic animals, banned movies, fake documents, credit cards, animal organs, dead bodies and so on. You wouldn't be surprised to know that they deal in cryptocurrency, mostly bitcoins. On the dark net, there are websites related to black markets and illegal activities such as Silk Road for selling drugs and weapons, software for deeper browsing like Onion Browser, buying and selling personal information, Wikileaks documents and money laundering, human trafficking and child pornography, illegal trading of human organs, paid killings and so on. These are some common examples. But everything is happening on the dark net, whatever you can think of. Even you can watch live torture and black magic if you pay. Just like the surface web, there are several legitimate activities on the dark web as well, such as accessing and sharing information, protecting someone's identity, and secretly communicating with spies or intelligence agencies. Many news channels operate on the dark web to protect classified sources okay so this was all about today's video i hope you understood the difference thanks for watching please subscribe